Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Chris with the Sea. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for joining me today, guys. On the table, we have all of it of on upgrades. I showed you in a previous video. We've just come in off the back of the uh, nine and ten packs with, to do with the Traxxas Sledge. So the idea is in this video, I'm going to get the parts fitted. I'll showcase them all, and we will we'll basically I'll show you on on the car. Now I did initially want to show how to install them, but if you think about, we've got the chassis here. Uh, we've got the towers and also we've got the upgraded spiral cut hardened gears and as well as the carbon fiber inserts for the arm this video would probably end up being way too big now i have got other parts i want to fit on the vehicle as well i'm going to do that in a separate video but today we're going to concentrate and get these parts on the car um, if i come to any parts uh, along the way um, and I think it's worth showing you because it is pretty straightforward this it's literally we're going to replace part for part um, I want to say a massive thank you to Arthur and the team at Vitavon for allowing me to do this video and obviously offering to send the parts over for the purpose of this um, as well as um, there's a couple of other companies I will show you in, in the videos going on further um what we'll do now is get the sledge on the table we'll start looking at what parts we're going to replace i'll quickly go over why i'm replacing the parts now there has been a few comments chris why are you going back down the route of upgrading the car what i've carefully done this time around guys let's put this in in, in sort of layman's terms is i'm not replacing any parts are not actually on the car now with the creighton I think what I did there was kept adding weight to the vehicle and eventually the car became so heavy that it was kind of battling against itself. Now, I will say mine, Mark, the guy who bought the car off me since, is using the vehicle and I seem to have rectified all those issues. He did have one little thing where he needed to change the arms and it's working great. So I'm under no illusions, right? What I've done is I've, uh, we're going to be upgrading the chassis. All right, so obviously there's a metal chassis on the car. I'm not adding weight. This is exactly the same weight as the stock part. It's just made out of 7075, so it's going to be a lot more durable than 6061. You've also got 7075 towers. Again, I'm only replacing what like for like. Uh, the hardened gears. Again, there's metal gearing in the car, and all I'm doing is literally putting the hardened spiral cut gears into the car. The only thing, and this, let's be honest, is not really adding weight is the carbon fiber inserts. There is composite in the car, but these could might be slightly, ever so slightly heavier. The only time it's gonna add weight to the vehicle this time around is by adding uh, a set of belted tires. Now, um, again, that's not gonna be so much of an issue. Traxxas have already brought a model out with the belted tires. So again, am I that bothered about adding the belted tires? No, I'm not. Um, let's get these parts away we get the car on the table and we'll go from there and uh, oh, by the way if you can hear anything in the background i have got my tumble dryer going in a sec uh because it is a little bit wet and miserable here in the uk and yeah it was a good time to sit down and do this video so come on then right okay so tractor sledge guys um so far absolutely really enjoying the truck um now again defeating all the comments uh there's <laughs> There's one guy in the comments at the moment that keeps bumping his gums and, and look, mate, honestly, I'm glad you're enjoying your crate and I'm enjoying this. Let's call it a day, shall we? Um, I'm, what I'm actually replacing, guys, all right, in this video is I'm gonna be replacing the front and rear shock towers, the chassis. Now, look, the reason why I'm doing this is uh, it is well documented, Traxxas, uh sledge owners I've, I've reported back if you have a heavy landing on the rear this rear tower does bend and then you have problems putting your body on so there is that uh the chassis um again i've not bent it yet i don't send the car this one yet up in the air too much um but so far with the type of bashing i've done eg hard ground bashing and um, a few little light jumps uh the truck has actually performed quite well um as you can see the bottom of the chassis has had a few hefty knocks and scrapes and bumps um so the idea is is kind of fortify the chassis um inserts in the arms that's just gonna toughen up the arms a little bit and the gears again um the gears are another thing that's well documented on this car in particular so i thought well you know why not actually fit the spiral cut gears into the car um 
I... But, but, I've run it, 10 packs for it, and I've had a blast. I have had a blast with this vehicle. Do I necessarily feel that you need to do this? No, I don't, all right? Um, everyone's got different cage shoes. If you're someone who's repeatedly sending it up a ramp 40 foot into the air, well, maybe that's gonna be a problem for you. But for the guys who just a general RC, you know, driving around, bit of bashing, couple of wheelies, jumping, that sort of thing, you probably won't find the issues until you're maybe 20, 30 packs in. Um, and, and, and this car has not given me any reason so far to believe that that's gonna happen. So I can only report what I'm finding here. Vidavon, um, I've used them in the past. They've got a good relationship with them. So I thought, well, look, you know, obviously, which parts do I feel that I need? If I was gonna uh, obviously fortify the car, which parts do I think I'm gonna need to replace? Now, loads of people have told me the SE is gonna pack in. Again, I've got no issues with the SE just yet, so I don't feel like I need to replace that. But um, yeah, I think what I'll start doing, I'll, I'll arrange the camera in a moment now, and I'll start swapping out the chassis. Now, I like to go down the route of the easy way of doing it. Now, what I mean by that is, I could just completely disassemble the car, all right, and then have a bunch of parts everywhere. Or the other option where you can do here, guys, is quite easy. You turn the car upside down, take all the screws out, take one chassis off, plonk the other one back on top, line all the screws back up, and then go from there. And then what I'll do, and but on the other hand, what I'm, I, with me replacing the gears as well, I think I might need to take the bulkheads off and do them separately one by one. So I want to make sure. Uh, it doesn't need any shimming, everything is going to fit in tidy. Um, but yeah, let's go. Right, okay, so as you can see the bottom of the chassis, guys, um, it has had a few battle scars along the way. Uh, some heavy grazes, basically where it's been over rocks and bumps and that sort of thing. But um, I'm going to need to take, obviously, all these screws out. So take over these rear, uh, rear skids and, obviously, the, uh, the front bumper. Um... I think once I've removed all the screws and everything, what I might do first though, is actually remove the front and rear bulkhead. Um, I'll get the gears in place. And then obviously once we've got the gears, obviously I'm gonna reattach a part straight on, back onto the vehicle. But um, yeah, quite a big, big effort to get all this done. But it should actually come up quite nice, I think. I mean, uh, by the way, guys, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I am running the RPM front bumper, and I do recommend these, because unfortunately, the sledge doesn't actually come with the front bumper. Weird thing to do by Traxxas. I don't know why they did it, but the good thing is this RPM one has taken a few knocks already, and it's holding up well. So, right, let's move on. Right, okay guys, so what I've actually done, I've taken the um, rear differential out, because uh, a little think about it, what, what I'm going to do here is obviously I'm going to replace the gear in, get that back into the diff case, make sure it's all feeling good, there's no play or I don't need to shim or, or you know whatever. Um, I can give you a quick comparison as well of the gears. Um, I can make sure everything is all put back together neatly here and then I can uh, move on to the front, separate that, do the same thing again and then we'll swap the chassis uh, all in one hit. So um, I had to have a little think of which way I wanted to go with it. Um, but as you can see, gearing is A-OK -okay so far. Um, I'm, how long this would have lasted, I don't really know. It is pot metal, you know, it's sintered metal. Um, but the good thing is by doing what I'm doing now um, Obviously, I'm going for spiral cut gears now spiral cut gears uh, are They're gonna be better full stop. All right, because You're getting more of the tooth Joining the input gear. So basically with, with a spiral Each tooth is spiraled in so there's more surface area for the tooth to bite onto the input gear again I'll clean it up, I'll keep them as spares. If the spiral cut gears don't work properly, I'm gonna let you know whichever way you look at it. Um, but I am I will say that so far the gear in is a okay. Now, could it be that obviously because I'm keeping the car on the floor? I don't know. I mean I'm not landing on power as per se. Um, remember guys, obviously to remove your input gear, you are gonna need to undo the 
screws that are, hold the output shaft um, in place and then obviously your input gear will actually whoop, that's my drive shaft um, your input gear will actually be able to uh, come out then so put you back on time lapse I'm gonna remove the gears and I'm gonna make sure that differential is topped up it should be because I only recently done it I can check and inspect the gear in inside there we'll then crack open the Vitavon one I'll clean up this one and I'll show you then close up of the differences between the two gear in and uh, yeah see you in a second Right, okay guys, so I quickly want to show you, obviously I've split the crown gear off the diff case here. So this is the one that comes with the car. Um, and just let you know, obviously there is the diff oil. I'm not really going to top that up any further because there's plenty in there. There's more than enough. Um, now, so this is the stock one here. And I don't know if you can see that. The, the edges, they actually feel quite sharp um so that it doesn't feel like they would have lasted that long can you see the edge there they are quite sharp so i got feeling the teeth there would, would have started chipping away so it's good news that obviously i'm going ahead and doing this but i mean don't get me wrong this could have lasted well i wouldn't like to say i mean it could last a hell of a lot longer but i can feel on this outer edge the teeth are starting to feel quite sharp now bearing in mind that i use a uh, teflon coated grease uh, to aid with if you look inside the diff case there guys um i use plenty of grease in on my gears so there's no issues there and this was the input gear uh, again showing a little bit of wear nothing major um but as you can see that's where see where the the shiny part is that's what's actually biting on the teeth there now this is the vitavon one as you can see so there is a pattern difference for a start so this is what they mean by spiral cut gears here so obviously you've got more tooth so there's your there's the spiral cut input gear there so the the benefit of this is you're getting more surface area on each tooth for it to bite to uh so definite bonus there as you can see Vitavon 43 tooth uh, spur, 10 tooth input, um, and it's for the sledge. So very nicely made, all in hardened steel. So I'm now going to re-add this back onto the car, and I'll show you the final result. But yeah, they were showing some signs of wear on the, uh, on the outer edge of this tooth here. Now, don't get me wrong, these are quite cheap. But um, so obviously replacing that part, but it would be a pain in the backside. You could be out and about and obviously that, that go on you. So this, even though it's a more expensive upgrade, the whole point of this is to give you some durability. Um, the one thing I will mention, it is actually thinner than the stock gear in. So I will have to check uh, for um, whether it needs shimming along the way. I've got some shims here, so I might do that in a moment. But uh, yeah, I decided to split it all the back off, and then sew it all back up, and then that's ready to go back onto the new chassis. But uh, as you can see, big difference there. Right, okay, so what I've done, guys, obviously I've gone ahead and put the input gear on. Now, remember, there is a small set screw for the output drive there. All right, so what you will need to do is obviously get your two mil driver, and I would recommend you adding just a touch of Loctite in there to obviously get it to, to um, uh, bond up with the um, output shaft of the input gear. All right, so obviously um, they do give you a little washer. Now remember to slide that over the, the shaft itself. Um, now a little way for me to test obviously whether it needs any shimming is grab hold of both uh, uh, the output cups here on the drive shafts or what would be going towards the drive shafts. I'll just give it a bit of a wiggle back and forth if you, to see if you can feel. Um, the other thing is, is obviously on the output drive here just kind of give it a little move back and forth. If you've got any movement, you know, 
just kind of get a feel for it give the gears a bit of a turn do they feel okay once you've done that guys i'm quite happy and i will say in all fairness didn't need it any shims at all all the gears matched up lovely so uh two good things have come out of that obviously you've got uh, your um bulkhead hasn't worn away yet um you might have maybe a warm bulkhead that you might need to add a shim or um maybe the teeth are not biting onto the spiral cut gears properly so i'm going to take that back off a second i'm going to re-add some uh, teflon grease the good thing is now that's all installed um i'll put you back on a time lapse i'll then go ahead and do the front and then we'll start stripping everything else down how's that i'll see you in a second Right, okay guys, so as you can see, this is the front end. I've managed to separate it from the main chassis there. And I thought, well, look, considering we've actually got it all stripped out now, as you can see, um, I'm thinking it'd be a good time to actually do the towers because essentially you've only got what? Uh, let's have a look. One, two, two screws holding it actually in now. Yeah, two screws holding it into the bulkhead. Release this top part, release the shocks, put it all back on. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, once I get this out of the car, I'll compare the two shock towers to each other. Um, but obviously, this is for the front end. Now, gearing-wise, same scenario, guys. Uh, the edges of the teeth were starting to feel quite sharp. So again, uh, as you can see, I use plenty of grease. Uh, a lot of it is in the diff case. I use plenty of grease um i've got no metal shavings or chipped teeth in their mind but the edges of the teeth were starting to feel quite sharp through way so i'm gonna obviously take that off put the uh spiral cut gears in obviously i'm not going to show you again because there's no real need i've just showed you uh obviously with the rear same thing here um and obviously just to kind of show you the way on the up there you go that was the way on the um the traxxas input gear so again you can see signs of ways going on there um so i'm just gonna change out the shock tower over quickly uh, in fact i'll get this out we'll compare the two then i'll put it back on so as you can see guys stripped it all off uh got all the parts out uh okay so this is the traxxas shock tower uh it's still actually nice and straight uh, we've got no issues there um remember obviously keep an inventory of where all your screws and everything go so this is the 7075 vitavon guys absolutely awesome looking piece of kit uh the the so the, the the size is actually the same look all right so there's no difference but the difference here is this is 7075 that's 6061 so inherently this is going to be stronger straight off the bat um little thing to mention here and i appreciated it was the standoffs the standoffs actually are very much like some of the custom standoffs that um uh, i used to buy for some of the armor trucks uh, obviously you've got this great big screw that comes through straight into the standoff here um and that's something i would normally upgrade to eg i think scorch actually do it for the armor range um now obviously these are hardened steel um, I don't know how long these will last. I mean, but the good thing is if you do snap or break one of these, obviously it's easier to replace this screw than the whole standoff itself. So yeah, really nice actually. I did like that. Um, so I'm now going to re-add the parts back on. Um, I will say the machine quality of the Vitavon stuff is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and the contrast between the blue and the silver is going to look awesome. Um, but yeah, 7075 definitely stronger than 6061 um good thing is obviously this isn't bent anyway but still
there you go guys there's the towers all all fitted looking pretty damn sexy if you ask me and obviously i've got the spiral cut gears now fitted to the front as well so that's the front end all sewn up uh, i've checked over everything's moving nicely everything's okay okay tightened all the screws back up used the same positions one thing i will say uh, that i appreciated with traxxas is everything is 2.5 millimeter button heads all the hardware it's easy to just wrench on because obviously it's the same screwdriver. Um, the only time you will have to use a two millimeter is when you're tightening up um, on the bottom of the car. Um, where we to on the chassis? There is two two screws underneath. I think the only time is for the plastics here. It is um, two millimeter hex screws right through and, so, and obviously attaching the battery tray and stuff like that but the the main sort of support, supportive screws right the way eg shocks towers that sort of thing diff bulkheads they're all 2.5 so i did appreciate that to be fair um right i'm gonna now move on to the rear um i'm gonna put the shock tower on while i'm doing it and uh yeah i'll see you in a sec <laughs> Right guys, so we're just left with the centre section now, so obviously this is where the chassis comes into it. So what I need to do here is obviously take out the battery tray, take out the SE, the motor, remove these uh, side guards off there. Um, I will say, like I mentioned, um, so far has been absolutely awesome. I take I Traxxas hardware. I really, really like it actually, to be honest. All the screws and everything, all 2.5, it was easy to get at. Uh, I haven't had one round out off me, on me yet, so that's also good news. Um, now, thing to mention here, I'm not actually going to be putting the motor and the SC back in here today, all right, on this video. Um, I have got some uh, different parts from a different manufacturer, uh, so I didn't feel it was fair on each company that have decided to send parts for the purpose of review to actually mix the two videos together. What I am going to do, though, is obviously I'll put the ESC and the battery tray and servo and everything all back in and then i'll show you the parts on the, on that part and then i'll move on to the motor mount um and what i'm also thinking of doing is actually replacing the motor that's in here with a 4282 2150 kv motor that i've got uh, actually just sat around waiting um Everything's gone together really well. All the gears feel really nice. Like I say, it was a, a shame that they kind of felt so sharp on the edges. Um, but the only thing I will say is so far, all the parts have got on really, really nicely. So what else? Right guys, so as you can see, uh managed to get the chassis off um beautiful thing about this actually to be honest with you is the design on the vitavon chassis is a a absolutely identical apart from the two little press parts in the chassis here as you can see uh the vitavon one doesn't need the extra strength in that chassis because obviously this being 7075 um now as you can see i have used and i mentioned it these little motor plates previously now because i'm actually going to a different motor mount altogether i'm not actually going to need these so i'll leave them in the chassis just for for future just in case for some reason this uh 7075 chassis lets me down but um i'm quite glad actually i did strip it down because the amount of gravel and dust and crap and all the other nonsense from when I've been out with Dai and uh, the boys and running it myself. Um, and the, the, actually, to be honest with you, I think the back end of this, sh this chassis is actually bent. 
So this is actually a straight edge there. And there's a gap underneath the chassis right here. So it does look like this rear part of this chassis has already bent. So there you go. Um, yeah, so right on that curve there. So there's a stress line. And that would co correspond with, obviously, when I gave the back end of the car uh, a bit of a tap and broke, obviously, the screws in... Uh, the bulkhead if you remember so I'm quite glad obviously I would maybe class this as an essential upgrade then uh, loads of people mentioned about the chassis bending and it does look like that that's actually bent now let's just kind of go over it again that's completely flat all right obviously the 7075 chassis is flat if we go to the Traxxas one you'll see there's a gap underneath so that has actually bent, not massively, but it has bent all the same. So interesting that, um, and does look like to, maybe a chassis is an essential upgrade for one of these cars. So did I pick up any damage? Yes, I did. Um, very, very interesting. Anyway, back onto the time lapse. I'm gonna start reassembling the car and we'll go from there. I'll see you in a second. So bouncing back to what I just mentioned about the rear of the standard chassis, obviously where you've got the pressed in part on the chassis there, guys. Um, it's weird because what Vintavon have done, it's not actually milled on that side. As you can see, there's no milling marks there. So, But what they have done is where it's machined, cut out, it's billeted out of a piece of aluminium. They've left that in there. So as you can see, that's actually corresponding there and there. So that's interesting, but um, yeah, I mean, this chassis is actually bent, so I'm quite glad that it's actually being upgraded, so that's one thing. And one thing to mention here, yeah, and I didn't mention it obviously when on the Overlook video, was um, this isn't cut out of a piece of aluminium, this is actually billeted out of a solid block of aluminium and then obviously machined into the right uh, position, um, sorry, shape, I should say. So. You're, it's going to be a lot stronger than like a pressed aluminium. So yeah, anyway, interesting. So that's all the parts fitted to the sledge. Um, obviously, 7075 front tower, 7075 rear towers fitted. Uh, also fitted the front and rear spiral cut gears, as I showed you. Uh, interestingly enough, replaced the chassis, and for good reason actually, because it's actually bent at the rear of the chassis. So that was a fault that many people had actually documented. And so now we've actually got the Vitavon chassis inside. Um, it can, it's come out looking absolutely gorgeous as well, mind look. Really, really smart, really nice. Um, this should definitely add some extra strength to the car. Now, interesting. Um, many people said, oh, you're adding weight to the car. 7075 is actually lighter than the 6061 guys so let you know we need to kind of clear that up um where many people would tell you that obviously um the parts are heavier they're not they're not so what i've actually done you in theory is lighten the car not by a lot mind of being straight view but 
as you can see uh ese is actually all in now and you know i've the, the one pig to do you was actually get the wiring from the ese over to the battery tray again so i had to kind of jiggle it around to get it back in um i'm not going to put the motor mount in yet so i'm not going to put the motor in all right because i am actually changing this motor mount out now again let me just move the car off the table a second a lot of people mentioned about the uh the motor mount not holding up i didn't have an issue with this and that was mainly because i used the plate system uh you can buy for it but um i have got another motor i want to try in the car as well i've got a uh, a 2150 uh 2150 4282 so this is a 4274 i believe i haven't had any issues with smoke there is working fine um but i'm i i've got it there i'm thinking to myself well you know why don't i give it a go um i can't see any reason why it wouldn't work out well um and also i've got an upgraded motor mount to go in um from a different company the other thing is that motor mount will in, will actually take away this composite diff mount in the center as well so we're replacing two parts in one go um but the actual quality of the parts that i've had from vitavon today i've got no issues with they fitted up to the car everything lined up no issues at all um what i'm going to do two seconds is i'll change the camera over and i'll quickly show you the parts and then we'll uh finish the video off but uh, yeah there's good reason why i haven't fitted these is because i have got other parts to add to the car okay so don't think obviously i'm just trying to uh, uh shorten the video down or anything like that it's not that is those parts are going into a different piece of equipment so i'll see you in a second there you go guys 7075 chassis is all in uh as i mentioned did have some issues getting the wiring across um towers are now in as well so as you can see 7075 sh uh, shock towers front and rear and also let's just have a look at the chassis from underneath really really nice machining um billeted guys all right so remember not press metal you actually billeted chassis um fitted right up i've got my rpm bumper back on um i've not added any as i mentioned any extra weight to the car um one thing i did uh mention you actually forgot to mention i've got a seize beer in there now that was because of pressure washed the car off last time using it so gonna replace that out um we are going to be replacing the motor mount and obviously the center diff gear uh sorry not the center diff gear the the housing um and i've also got a different motor i want to try in the vehicle as well because we are going to be running some method rc wheels that uh to show you by there um everything's worked a-okay uh we've got the spiral cut gear in in there and yeah th this car should be pretty damn tough now because i am using the hardened spur gear anyway um so yeah quite excited about all this guys should be absolutely awesome when it's done i'm gonna go back up top now end the video and we'll go from there well i hope you enjoyed the video guys uh really really nice the vid of honor sent these over i can't wait to run the car with the parts in um i was quite surprised actually but about the chassis to be fair um i mean i did have a nasty knock at the rear end of the car uh recently where i had to replace two screws and i think that's where the damage has actually happened but um it does look like it could be straightened as oh ever so minor but yeah it's just a shame obviously that the chassis did get damaged now the parts are on the vehicle um this is going to add some more strength we're not adding weight to the vehicle and i think it's going to overall just improve the, the way the car um performs day in day out all right so this is more about longevity rather than making it you know a speed you know something ridiculously fast or anything like that um i'm going to stick with the vxl 6s at the moment um because again not had an issue with that the electrics are still working okay um done a bit of shock tuning recently as well so the shocks are feeling a lot better all in all very very happy massive shout out to arthur and the guys at vit of honor will put a link in the description to where you can pick up these parts guys i hope you enjoyed the video um in the next one i'm going to show you the motor mount that uh it was kindly sent over to me for the purpose of the videos and uh stay awesome guys i'll catch you in the next one